watching the Corvette channel. On July 2nd, 1992, history was made in Bowling Green, Kentucky when the one millionth Chevrolet Corvette rolled off the line at the General Motors Bowling Green assembly plant. The 1992 model 1YY6677, Arctic white convertible with a black top and red leather trim bearing the VIN number 1G1YY33PXN5119134 came to life at an event attended by thousands of Corvette fans, dignitaries, plant workers and their families. This video presentation will follow the record-breaking Corvette as it completes the final phases of production. Accompanied by interviews with some of the key suppliers whose products are integral parts of every Chevrolet Corvette. Throughout this presentation, we will take you behind the scenes for an exclusive tour of the production line, for a unique look at the Corvette assembly process, culminating with the one millionth Chevrolet Corvette celebration. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Paul Bryan. In our set today, the General Motors assembly plant in Bowling Green, Kentucky, the home of the Chevrolet Corvette. And there's a great sense of anticipation around the plant today as we take a look at an event which has been almost 39 years in the making, the roll-off of the one millionth Chevrolet Corvette. I'd like to welcome all of you, and over the next hour and a half, we will be watching live as the Corvette makes its way through the final assembly phases here on the assembly line. We'll meet with some of the many contributors to the Corvette and take a look at some of the special events which have shaped America's sports car over the years. Our audience today includes over 6,000 GM locations all over North America, and we welcome you, of course. Among our special guests here at the plant today, we will have Kentucky Governor Brereton uh, C. Jones, Lieutenant Governor Paul Patton, and Bowling Green Mayor Johnny Webb. And joining me on stage today is Mr. Dan Gale, who is president of the National Corvette Museum. Dan, the Corvette is, is something to the Chevrolet family and to the General Motors family, certainly, but also means a great deal to the millions of Corvette fans all over the world. It sure does, Paul. On any given day here at the plant, you'll find uh, thousands of Corvette employees or hundreds of Corvette employees uh, uh, enthusiasts lined up here to view the building of this uh, Corvette. Uh, this is the third largest tourist attraction in the state of Kentucky. It draws over 90,000 people per year. And very shortly, they're going to have another reason to come and visit Bowling Green, are they not? Well, we were fortunate. We broke ground June the 5th for the museum that we're building right across the street. We expect to uh, have better than 500,000 visitors per year through the doors. 
as soon as we open. We're going to open probably uh, late fall of 1993, Paul. Well, this is the, uh, the parade cars that have lined up at Beach Bend Raceway, part of the homecoming weekend. This year, there were better than 460 Corvette enthusiasts that lined up in the parade from all over the country. And there were some rather unusual cars that we're going to be seeing coming up here. Larry Shinoda's car coming. Yes, in just a second, you'll see this, is, this yellow car is Larry Shinoda, the designer of the Stingray. And then right behind him is the uh, Astrovet, followed by the Serve 3 from Chevrolet. They're going to go from Beach Bend down through the, the uh, main square of downtown Bowling Green and on up here to I-65, and they'll join us on our property for the groundbreaking. 460 cars, it takes quite a bit of orchestration to make a parade like this work. You know, with, the, with the amount of business that uh, the Chevrolet plant here accounts for, I'm sure that there was a great deal of cooperation and enthusiasm from the city fathers as well. There certainly was. In just a second, you're going to see Zora mount our bulldozer. Here he is with his driving suit on, ready to go. <laughs> this is the world's only Corvette bulldozer. And he did quite a job of breaking ground for us. Uh, who, who better to drive that bulldozer to break the ground at, at the new Corvette Museum than Zora? Is it, that's probably the most unusual looking Corvette we've ever seen at this point. It, it looks like it needs a little buffing down the center. It's, it's a pretty powerful bulldozer. He had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are going to be assisted today by one of Bowling Green's own, Bob Breeding, who is a final line supervisor here at the plant. He's among the people who make sure that uh, everything is right as the cars come off the line. They are uh, a whole team of people that assist in, in the proud, proud people who all put their hands on these cars as they make their way down the assembly line over a, about a four-day period. The, uh, the assembly people here have all today uh, dressed up in uh, one millionth Corvette uh, regalia. And let's talk to Bob right now. He is out there. Bob, how are things going down on the line right now? Hi, Paul and Dan, and welcome Corvette lovers everywhere. Well, this is it, the one we've all been waiting for, the one millionth Chevrolet Corvette. This is a place on the line where all Corvettes are started for the first time. And here to do us the honors today is the revered father of the Corvette, Mr. Zora Arcas Duntov. Zora, fire it up. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Sounds beautiful. Okay. Okay, Paul and Dan, that's it. We've started the one millionth, and now back to you. There's still about an hour's worth of final assembly that has to, uh, to take place on that one millionth Corvette, but the engine's fired up and we're in good shape. Thank you, Bob. We'll be back with you in a few minutes. Now, we do want to show you what took place last Monday back in Detroit at the General Motors headquarters. The road to the one millionth Corvette began as 70 classic Corvettes paraded down West Grand Boulevard and parked for public viewing. The cars ranged from the latest ZR1 to restored classics ranging all the way back to 1953. It also marked the opening of the road to the one millionth exhibit at the GM building, which will be open to the public through July 17th. And it features a 1953 Corvette, the 1965 Mako Shark, a model and description of the National Corvette Museum, and a whole bunch more. Members of the National Corvette Restorer Society participated in the parade. And it began right here in Bowling Green back on June 26th with the Corvette Caravan. Paul, you want to mention that one of those 1953 Corvettes drove all the way from Philadelphia to Detroit. You know, it's, it's funny, when you uh, have one Corvette, you're sure to turn a head. If you get two Corvettes together, you're sure to have a bunch of people looking. And if you put these many Corvettes together, there's a whole crowd of people. Now, at this point, we need to go back down on the line where Bob Breeding is standing by. Bob? Thanks, Paul. I'm here with Tim Kimmel from the, he's a sales manager for LOF Glass. They supply the Corvette with our solar control glass panels. Tim, would you like to say a few words about your involvement with this project? Sure, thanks, Bob. Uh, on behalf of Libby Owens Ford, we'd like to congratulate Chevrolet on their one millionth Corvette. It's an exciting event. We'd also like to point out that LOF glass is installed in every one of those millionths, and we're very proud of that. Uh, also, I'd like to point out on the uh, EasyCool glass, the high-performance uh, solar glass, that every 
our, our Corvette was the first production vehicle to uh, take advantage of that production glass. Thanks a lot, Tim, and we'll take it back up to you, Paul and Dan. All right, thank you, Bob. There, of course, is a great deal of heritage that goes along with the Corvette. It's literally a legend in its own time. And as such, was honored as the honored mark at the Monterey Concorde de la Gans at the Monterey uh, in 1987 at Laguna Seca Racetrack. It's an event that brought together some of the people whose lives and careers were touched by the Corvette. If any of you have ever been to the Monterey Historic Races in Concord, it is the beauty show of beauty shows in the automotive art. What a beautiful show. And it's sad, too, because with the death of Bill Mitchell just a couple of weeks after that uh, Monterey Concord, a reunion like that would never be able to take place again. It was Monterey that uh, we made the decision that we had to build this museum. It became evident to us that the heritage was slowly slipping away and we needed to take control and, and make this happen. is back on the line with another guest. Bob? Thanks, Paul. I'm here with Chuck Lutz, who's the sales manager for the Automotive Casting and Forging Division of Alcoa. Chuck, welcome, and tell us a little bit about your participation in this event. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Alcoa's Automotive Casting Group manufactures the upper and lower control arm as well as the front and rear knuckle for the Corvette uh, in the forging facilities in Vernon, California, as well as Cleveland, Ohio. Chuck, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your involvement. And Paul and Dan, it's all yours. Yeah. The uh, heritage of the Corvette is uh, certainly widespread, and people who like Corvettes like to keep things about them. And I'd like to tell you that an edited version of today's broadcast will be available for purchase by calling 1-800-331-6839. Paul, so. you know, this is a great opportunity for all Corvette enthusiasts to uh, own one of these tapes, at least one of these tapes. 
and a portion of the proceeds go to the museum. Great. Why don't we get back out and let's talk to Bob Breeding, who is back on the line. Bob? Thanks, Paul. I'm here with Jeff Hell, and Jeff is the sales manager for DuPont Automotive. DuPont provides us with the paint that goes to the Corvette that gives us this beautiful appearance. Jeff, would you like to say a few words about your involvement? I sure would, Bob. Thank you. Um, DuPont is extremely pleased to be part of this millionth vehicle celebration. You know, Bob, the, the quality and attention to detail that this finish receives has, has never been finer. We look forward to a continued relationship with Chevrolet and Corvette and, and hope that this relationship can be continued uh, on indefinitely. Thank you, Thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate your comments, and back to you, Paul. The anticipation is really growing. I, I think we are working on windshield number 999,999. I think if they don't uh, quell some of this, they're so excited they may build a two millionth before long. <laughs> There it is right now. You can see it rolling off the line at this point. So it's, uh, oh, that's 995 that's coming off. So we're getting uh, closer and closer. You can feel it, can't you? You sure can. Now, I tell you what, let's get back on, uh, on the line with Bob and find out who he's going to be visiting with. Bob? Thanks, Paul. We are really getting close. I'm here with Fred Kovac, Vice President of the uh, Goodyear Tire World Technology Group. Fred? Goodyear is proud to be a partner in the Corvette success story. Goodyear tires are an integral part of the phenomenal performance of the Corvette. Goodyear Eagles, Gatorbacks, and 17-inch Z-speed rated tires have all added to the mobility of the Corvette. In 1992, Corvette became the first car to adopt an OE asymmetric computer-engineered ultra-high performance tire, the Eagle GSC from Goodyear. A million congratulations to Corvette from all their friends at Goodyear. Thank you very much, Fred, and we're pleased that you've been a part of this celebration. Back to you, Paul and Dan. Okay, thank you, Bob. It is getting very close now. Everybody seems to be uh, so pumped up. Today's event is uh, attended as I, took, uh, as I look around here. Hundreds and hundreds of workers and their families have all come here, as well as Thousands of people have literally driven thousands of miles to get here. Now, also, we want to welcome all of the uh, different television stations who are joining us around the country at this point. We're about 30 minutes away from the one millionth Corvette rolling off the line here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And in just a bit, we will get back to Bob and uh, check. Is Bob ready at this point? Okay. Well, he's moving because the assembly line is moving right now. You, you have Corvette club members from all over the country who are here today, don't you? I understand that there are many, many club members from at least the surrounding states that are here today. You know, there are over 600 Corvette clubs throughout the country, uh, as well as many, many in Europe, uh, Australia. Uh, the corporate movement is really growing strongly. The, uh, the people who are here right now, there's a big group of people who are out in front of the stage where the car is going to come up and uh, be joined by a 1953 Corvette that's on stage. But there's another whole bunch of people which I think is equally as large to what we have here and maybe, maybe a little bit bigger down there on the line where that car will actually burst through that one millionth bearing. Yes, that's probably quite true. So, Bob is ready at this point. Let's go ahead and get back to him. Bob? Thanks, guys. I'm here with John Wisterbarth. He's the general, or the business manager of GenCore Corporation. They supply us with many of our plastic outer body panels. John? Bob, thanks for allowing GenCorp to be part of this great celebration. Uh, we've been associated with the Corvette since 1960 and very proud of that association. I think our employees make the difference supplying a quality product, which is demanded by Corvette, Bowling Green operation, and the customer. We would like to continue to be a supplier to Corvette to the next great celebration, that being the two millionth Corvette. Bob, thanks for allowing GenCorp to be part of the program. Thanks a lot, John, and I hope I'm still around for that two millionth. <laughs> Let's say we've got a uh, we've got some video here of a '53 Corvette, and and as that first car, we're, we're looking right now at uh, at this car. Engines have come a long way. Tell us what was the power plant in this car, for instance. It was a six. Well, Paul, technology wasn't a feature in the '53 Corvettes. We've come a long way. This is the old blue flame six cylinder. And this was basically built on a passenger car chassis uh, with the same passenger car uh, steering capabilities. And it was a hand built car back in those days. The pieces were all hand fit. They walked up and down the line and found what they thought was the best fit and uh -huh. glued it together. 
Well, okay. We may talk more about that in a little bit. Let's get back down on the line. Bob is there with our next guest. Robert? Thanks, Paul. Our next guest is Mike Regina from Lobdell Emory Manufacturing. You're talking about endurance. They play an integral part in the endurance of this Corvette. They supply us with all of our uniframe parts. Without those, it uh, wouldn't be a Corvette, especially a millionth Corvette. Mike, would you like to say a few words? Yes, Bob. I'm really proud to be a major supplier on this vehicle. As you mentioned, we make most of the uniframe parts and the floor pan. And although you can't see them, they're there. They're all galvanized for uh, thorough corrosion resistance. Most of them are high strength steel. And uh, they're fairly complicated stampings that stretch the state of the art. We make these at our Winchester, Indiana facility, which by the way is having its own massive uh, celebration today to help uh, celebrate this one millionth car. Uh, we gave the employees a day off and we uh, had a company picnic and uh, a Corvette rally and you name it. Anyhow, it's wonderful being here. Thank you, Mike, and it's, it's terrific that you're able to do that and I'm glad your employees are so involved with this Corvette. Paul, Dan, back to you. Thank you, Bob. Racing has always been part and parcel of the Chevrolet Corvette. As we saw, for instance, when the SS was being assembled back, uh, back in the late 50s, very, very quick uh, time, 48 weeks from conception to car. And, and you know, the thing I found most interesting about that, Dan, is that we've always called Chevrolet the bow tie boys. Back in the late 50s, the, the gearheads, the guys who were out making them run fast, were the guys who were really wearing bow ties. Well, look around you. They're still wearing bow ties, Paul. Oh, I didn't see Paul Simon come into the room. However, I did see Elvis here a bit ago. He was helping install the windshield. <laughs> when, when you look at the Corvette now and, and the racing that, uh, that occurs, and then you kick back to the cars that we saw at Monterey, the cars that Dick Thompson used to run, the cars that Roger Penske ran, the cars that Augie Pats ran, all of those storied histories and major, major battles that took place. You had the Corvette versus Cobra Wars going on in a production with, uh, with SECA. It was an incredible racing history that was going on. It was. There was some great racing then. And, you know, there's been some great racing uh, of late, too, with the challenge cars. You bet. Now, let's get back to Bob. He's on the line, and our next guest is with him. Bob? Thanks, guys. I'm here with Pat Burke, who's the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Lear Seating. They have something very special to unveil for us in this one millionth Chevrolet Corvette. Go ahead, Pat. Thank you, Bob. We prepared some special trim covers here for the one millionth edition here. We're unveiling them now. As you can see, we have... Uh, a logo here in the headrest, which uh, will always show that this was the one millionth vehicle. And Lear Seating's awfully proud to be part of this effort. We've been involved in Corvette Seating since 1968. We did the first uh, fiberglass reinforced structure for the vehicle in 1985. And since 1990, we've supplied all the seating here to this plant from our Louisville plant up the road. Thank you very much, Bob. Thanks, Pat. It's terrific to have you involved in our celebration. Thanks again. Paul and Dan, it's your turn. All right. Thank you, Bob. You know, here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, is the current home of the Chevrolet Corvette, but they weren't always built here. Where, where was the first production? Well, you know, the first Corvette was built in uh, Flint, Michigan, of course, on an old truck plant, and then they moved to St. Louis in 1954. Again, they, they shared the uh, truck plant there. So Bowling Green is actually the first home of the Corvette. It's the first time they've had their own facility. And, uh, of course, it's quite a facility, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. This is, what, about 2 million square feet? 2 million square feet, right. And I, I understand that it takes about four and a half or five days for a car to make it all the way through the assembly line. Well, that's pretty amazing when you stop and think about it. From, from start to finish, four days. Well, yeah, I thought that it would go faster. You know, but now as I, when I came in here yesterday and I took a look at the assembly line, it's, it's right behind us right now. The cars move very, very slowly, and the work is extremely meticulous. Everybody has a great sense of pride in what they're doing with each one of these cars. That's what makes this plant so special. The people here have a tremendous amount of pride, as you just said, but it, it, it really overflows, especially today, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody is really pumped today. When I was up in uh, the dressing room before, and just outside, there were some fellas out there, and they were putting on their Corvette one millionth T-shirt, and, and another guy said, where'd you get it? He said, well, you got to get one. He said, a day like this only happens once in a lifetime.
uh, the thing that amazed me about coming into this plant was how clean it was. I mean, this is an astoundingly clean automotive plant. I think that goes back to, uh, to pride again. I think they're so I proud of what so. they're doing. They really care more about their environment. Let's go ahead and get back to Bob, who is back on the line. Robert, if you would. Thanks, guys. We're here with Fred Herman. Fred's a business manager for Mobile Oil. They supply us with that great Mobile One motor oil. Fred, would you do the honors? We sure appreciate your involvement in the, in the uh, one million Chevrolet Corvette. Like a few comments from you. Yes, well, at Mobile, we'd like to congratulate everybody at Chevrolet on this tremendous accomplishment of the millionth Corvette. We recognize the quality, performance, and tradition of Corvette, and we're proud to be a part of that with Mobile One. And thank you very much. Thank you, Fred. Back to you, Paul and Dan. Thank you. Dan, the thing that you can probably speak to better than anyone is the fierce loyalty of the Corvette owner. And a lot of times, the Corvette fan base is not limited to the owner base. I mean, there are fans who are Corvette wannabes. Well, there are, there are, there are automobile enthusiasts, and then there are Corvette enthusiasts. No, you don't have to own a Corvette to be a true Corvette lover. There's just so many people out there that really care about this car. You know, the Corvette has touched everyone's life in America in one way or another. And that's why the club movement is so strong. Uh, the big thing is, is the movement is, is really getting strong in the foreign areas. Uh, Europe, Australia has a huge Corvette club. Yeah, Did you know they, that? They do. When we raced uh, the Indy cars down in Australia, Surfer's Paradise, uh, the first year, which would have been about 18 months ago, uh, Corvette owners from all over Australia drove their cars to Surfer's Paradise because they knew that they were going to be there with the Americans and they wanted to show them that we had Corvettes down here too, mate. All those right-hand drive Corvettes must have been something to see. <laughs> no, they weren't. Anyway, let's get back down to Bob. He has our next guest as we anticipate the production of the one millionth Corvette. Bob? Right, I'm here this time with Heinz Prechter. Heinz is the chairman of American Sunroof Corporation that provide us with these magnificent convertible tops. Heinz? It is certainly a pleasure for our company to provide the convertible system. And it is rather historic for me to be part of the program today. And we certainly thank Chevrolet and General Motors to have the opportunity to participate in Team ASC, including our plant here in Bowling Green. It's very much appreciative of the opportunities we have working together. And I, I know we built now about 52,000 Corvette convertibles, and it just started. And I'm looking forward to building 52,000 more in the next three years. Heinz, thank you very much. We appreciate you being involved in our celebration. Thanks. Back to you, man. I remember when they stopped production of the Corvette uh, convertible for a while, and everybody kind of went, oh, and then thanks to Heinz Presker and his people at ASC, it happened. I, I can remember when I was a boy, which is amazing that I could remember that far you back. You have but a good memory. I know. But when the uh, TV show Route 66 was on with uh, George Maharis and, and Marty Milner, wasn't it? Weren't they the two that was in there? Maharis and, and Milner, I believe it was. Right. Uh, and when the 60 Corvette came out, where it had the, uh, the Stingray-like back end, everybody was watching the show. They were watching the show so that they get the, the first glimpse of the new Corvette. That was a very popular show, as you well know. I mean, uh, I think the, they debuted the 1960 Corvette on that show, and uh, also all the way through to 1963. So that was a real popular show, and I think all the enthusiasts uh, really were glued to that. You know, they may bring that back again. It showed for a while on Nickelodeon, if you remember. Yeah, it'll be a short show. Route 66 is only about three blocks long now, so. Let's get back to Bob. He's out on the line with a very special guest. Bob? We have Ron Barton with us, one of our implant employees, who's going to install a part that goes on every Corvette, not just the millionth one, but every Corvette, a sticker that says Corvette GM UAW Local 2164 Proud. Ron, go ahead. That's it from here. Back to you, Paul and Dan. Boy, there was a whoop that went on around this plant when that sticker went on, and rightfully so. Think there's some union people back here? I think so. And, and anybody who wants to put uh, foreign workmanship and foreign quality up against what comes out of this plant, they're going to come in second place. These guys do an absolutely tremendous job, and congratulations to all of you who are here at 
at the Bowling Green Corvette plant. I'll second that, Paul. The one millionth Corvette was signed by many of the Bowling Green workers as it made its way through the assembly process. Even the vice president's wife, Marilyn Quayle, wanted to be part of Corvette history. Oh, yeah, I've never driven one of these. These are great. What fun. So they handle pretty well for you. Yes. I want one. <laughs> I think the vice, my birthday's coming up. You think the vice president will give me one? When, uh, when we look at the competition for the Corvette, there have been a lot of people who have tried to imitate, but have never really captured the heart and soul of the Corvette. Well, there, there may be some other sports cars, but there is no competition for the Corvette. What could be more American than a Chevrolet Corvette? There is absolutely nothing. The, uh, the car has been such a piece of Americana uh, Miss America is always given a car of that. I mean, you know, what better car to give her than that car? That's right. It's, it's the symbol of pride, I think, for the whole nation. As we look around the plant, there are over 341 suppliers here at the, uh, at the Bowling Green plant, and they, uh, they are all just as proud as every one of these UAW workers who put their parts together to build Corvettes. Now let's get back to Bob. We're going to make this car official, Bob. Paul, a very special guest with me right now, Jim Perkins, general manager of Chevrolet. He has one last detail to add to make this millionth Corvette complete. Jim, go ahead. Would you do the honors? I would look forward to this.
There it is, ladies and gentlemen. How about it? Jim? Jim? And now the one millionth Corvette is complete. Thank you. Terrific. Much. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Well, another big whoop went up here, and, and rightfully so. Now, as, as soon as, uh, as uh, Mr. Perkins is done clearing the area there, he doesn't get to drive it first. No, he doesn't. I believe Paul Schnees is going to drive that car Absolutely. for the first time. Paul Schnees, uh, who is the Bowling Green plant manager, is going to be joined, and rightfully so, by Bill Jackson, who is president of UAW Local 2164. And they're going to jump in and drive this one millionth Corvette off the line. We uh, we're looking down the line right now. There are a lot of people who are saying, OK, we've got the emblem on. Everything is ready to go. Why doesn't this car fire up and get going? Well, I think they've got a little ceremony planned. They have to go through a ribbon down there, don't they? I think so, too. The people here, though, are waiting for this car to come up on stage. And uh, down there, Jim Perkins will be talking to to everybody down the uh, the line is Paul Schnees. And now, uh, Paul Schnees, uh, Schnees, rather, is vice president of your Corvette Museum, is he not? That's right. He, uh, he has two full-time positions. He runs this plant, and he does a very, very good job for us as vice president of the Corvette Museum Foundation. How many people do you have on staff for the museum? Well, we have a, a large staff of volunteers. There are uh, 23 directors, and they all work very hard. Okay, and uh, out of that staff, are there people who man a, uh, a shop here in Bowling Green? We have a, a large gift shop just out of the next exit, exit 22. We have a gift shop, we have a few cars on display and some artifacts, and we'll be there until we actually open here, uh, hopefully in August of next year. All right, real good. Now we can get back out on the uh, final assembly line, and uh, I guess Jim Perkins is waiting. Mr. Perkins? Ladies and gentlemen, the legend lives on. I'm very pleased to present the beautiful one millionth Chevrolet Carvette. Congratulations, Paul, for driving it across the line. And congratulations to the UAW for a fantastic job. Beautiful automobile. The one millionth of anything's a lot. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Tremendous, tremendous success. Well, thank you. If, if there was ever any doubt that this was a team effort that put this car together, when you saw everybody behind that car, and Paul Schnees and, and Bill Jackson may have been driving it, but they were getting pushed by everybody who works at this plant and everybody in the whole Chevrolet and General Motors family. Congratulations to all of you. Well, there is a great deal of anticipation. This crowd is waiting for the car to come up on stage, but while we're waiting for that, there is one more person that we do need to hear from, and that is the father of the Corvette, Zora Arcus Duntoff. Now, we spoke to him and asked what he remembers about the first time he saw the Corvette at the GM Motorama at New York's Waldorf Astoria. That was in January of 1953. Well, uh, beautiful shell, but n nothing much there. But I complimented uh, Ed Cole by having a beautiful car. Most significant thing was the car itself. It was before uh, 56, it was a styling exercise. 56 was a, a good car with performance and uh, road holding and Whatever you uh, name it, has, uh, car has it. That that is a transformation for styling exercise to useful car. Zora, how do you feel about the one millionth Corvette coming off the line in July? How does that make you feel? That's quite an achievement, don't you think? Yeah, it's an achievement 
all the people who were involved in this Corvette for the achievement. Achievement, all people that were involved in this Corvette, they can be proud. You know, over the past two days, while I've been walking around this Bowling Green plant, I've met a lot of people who have been displaying a great deal of emotion. But how could anyone possibly match the emotion of the father of this car, Zora Arkhazdantov, that we just saw? I mean, this was the birth of his child that he was talking about in 1953. And here we are with progeny totaling one million at this point. An incredible day for Zora, an incredible day for all of us who do love Chevrolet and Corvette. I can remember as a young fellow, I think I can remember that far back, <laughs> Zora Duntov was an idol. It was an idol to all those youngsters of us who ran those Chevys up and down. It was mar marvelous. Now, were you part of the crowd that used to uh, exercise your cars a bit? Oh, occasionally we'd exercise. <laughs> the famous Duntov cam, though, was just incredible. Everybody had to have a Duntov cam. Now, now Bob, you've been here at the, at the Bowling Green plant for 12 years, and uh, you were here for not only the millionth today, but you were also here for the 750,000. I got to see 750,000 also, yes. To really, you know, to get back to Zora, when I was out there with him earlier and, and had him start that millionth car for the first time, it was a thrill to me, just as much as it was to everybody that saw it. Yeah, as, as we look at live, uh, live video right now from down where the car is, is making way, we're going to be having the, the Western Kentucky Marching Band bring them in, that Zora Duntoff that we're looking at now, who, uh, who is still a, as young as heart as he has ever been. Quite a guy. When, uh, when this plant cracks open, how many people work here, Bob? We have approximately 1,120 uh, dedicated, loyal, motivated employees here. Maybe one that we're questioning, but we're not too sure. <laughs> and is he sitting next to me? I think, no, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, it's really an excellent workforce. We're proud to, to be involved with UAW. We have an excellent working relationship. Uh, just, that's what Corvette's all about. Is, have there ever been any, any statistics kept on how many people who work at this plant actually own Corvettes? Interesting question, but yeah. uh, I can't say there's an awful lot, but I know we see quite a few in the parking lots. Yeah. The thing that, that uh, I was really looking forward to when I came here was seeing all of the, uh, the quality control, and you are inextricably intertwined with that. Everything. That's true. I'm right at the end of the line. The, the people that work with me are responsible to ensure that that finish on that Corvette is the absolute best. You know, the other thing that I should point out on this one millionth Corvette that, uh, that we've just saw come off the line, when, when the car was on the line yesterday, you and I walked over to it, and everybody who touched this car when it was going through the line signed it. That's right. There are thousands of signatures on the underbody of that Corvette in places that aren't really visible at the moment, but if it ever comes apart, which we don't think it will, I don't think it will. there are names every place. Now, I, I think, are we uh, getting very close to our little parade here? I can't say even say that it's a little parade. We have with us uh, the Western Kentucky University Marching Band, and uh, they're going to lead that Corvette up to the stage. Well, I hear some drums in the background there, and I think that's indicative of the Western Kentucky Band firing up. We'll get everybody ready out here. As here they come. They are coming right now as the car rolls off the assembly line here at Bowling Green, Kentucky.
This is fantastic. Oh, you bet. Everybody moving up on stage. This is, uh, I have to admit, <laughs> I'm, I'm not anywhere near as close to this as you are or any of the thousands of workers who have been the, uh, involved in the history of this car. That was a very touching moment. Very moving. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is, uh, let's, get, let's get right up to the podium. And is that Paul up there? It's our plant manager, Paul Schnees. There he is. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. I am Paul Schnees, plant manager of this facility. On behalf of the entire workforce of this assembly plant, may I welcome all of you to this very, very special celebration. We are pleased that you could take time out from your busy schedule to be a part of the final build of the one millionth Corvette. I would like to take the time to personally congratulate the workforce and the men and women of Corvette who work here every day and have made this day possible. Without your upending desire to assemble the highest quality Corvettes for our customers, this day would not have happened. I would also congratulate the men and women from the General Motors Corvette platform in Detroit, many of whom are present with us today, the rest watching by way of satellite in Detroit, for their continuing efforts to improve the Corvette every year. Your dedication to retaining the heritage of the Corvette while improving the vehicle every year is one of the reasons we are able to reach this very good milestone. With all of your efforts, the people in the plant and the people in Detroit the Corvette truly has become a legend in its own time. And finally, to the friends of Corvette, the enthusiasts, the Corvette restorers, the people who race Corvettes, to the over 600 active Corvette clubs in the world, and to our customers who simply enjoy driving a Corvette, this day is also to honor you. Today, several thousand Corvette friends from Kentucky and across the country have come to the plant to be a part of our celebration. We thank you for coming to Bowling Green, Kentucky, the home of the Corvette. I would like at this time to introduce Mr. Billy Jackson, President of the United Auto Workers Local 2164. This UAW local, local leadership has been a large part of our success as we have jointly worked together to improve the quality of this great car that we deliver to our customers. Billy? First of all, I'd like, to, I'd like to thank some people from the International Union that graced us with their presence here today. One of them is our director our newly elected director, and I feel that he's going to do a terrific job for our membership in Region 3. That person's Ron Gillifanger. Ron, would you show yourself? <laughs> but I'd also like to, I'd like to thank Gary Sorrell, our servicing rep, for coming today. Also, Bob Farley, who's our Quality Network rep. Bob Farley, many of you know him. He heads up our Quality Network program, uh, program which uh, takes the lead in making sure that quality goes into this car through people. Also, I, I don't want to forget Marilyn Sears. If I forget Marilyn, he'll never forgive me. Marilyn Sears is our assistant director who's been on board a long time and he will be staying with us under Ron's administratorship. So I, I appreciate Marilyn. But most of all today, I'd, I'd like to thank not only the membership of Local 2164, who builds the quality into each car, but also our retirees that's made it possible that the one millionth car is, will be built and will continue to be built because our retirees is the backbone of any union or any plant. So I thank the retirees very much. And then, and in closing, let me say this. It would be my, it would be my wish that this Corvette will be built forever or until the Lord returns. 
whichever comes first. So with that, thank you very much. I'd like to take a moment now and introduce the folks that are on the podium with us. First, from our Bowling Green area, may I present to you the Honorable Mayor of Bowling Green, Mr. Johnny Webb. Our State Senator, Nick Kofogolis. State Representative Billy Ray Smith. State Representative Judy Richards. From the State of Kentucky, our Secretary of Transportation, Mr. Don Kelly. Secretary of Tourism Cabinet, Crit Lowell. Our Vice President and General Manager, Rear, Rear, Rear Drive Automotive Division, Mr. Joe Spielman. The Corvette Platform Manager, Russ McLean. Director of Region 3 UAW from Indianapolis, Mr. Ron Gettlefinger again. I'm sorry, you got it. <laughs> Chairman of the uh, Shop Committee of Local 2164, Mr. Eldon Renault. <laughs> A man who's very special to all of us in Corvette, our retired Chief Engineer of Corvette, the man we all know as the grandfather of Corvette, Zora Ankus Duntoff. <laughs> our present chief engineer, our Corvette engineering director, Mr. Dave McClellan. We have the Chairman of the Board of American Sunroof Corporation, Mr. Heinz Prechter. Another very special guest with us today from Champaign, Illinois. The man who used to own this beautiful 1953 Corvette on the stage, who has donated it to the Corvette Museum to be built in Bowling Green, Mr. Ray Quinlan. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you from the Commonwealth of Kentucky, our governor, Governor Burton Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. On behalf of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, I'm here today to congratulate General Motors, to congratulate you, Paul, and to congratulate all of the great Kentucky workforce that has made this possible. You and I both know that the Corvette is not only America's car, but it's Kentucky's car. It belongs to us. And we are never going to let this Corvette plant leave the Commonwealth of Kentucky. You can count on that. Never. It gives me great pleasure today not only to give credit where credit's due, and that's to the workforce that builds this great car, but I'm here today to make an announcement. 
and that is that the Corvette Museum is going to become a reality because the Commonwealth of Kentucky is here today to present a check for $400,000 to make certain that access road is built. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. If you like what you saw today, please hit subscribe and hit the like button. Also, be sure to hit that bell so you will be alerted to our next uploads.